So I'm here with John Double O Fleming on a special uh, Tuesday Tips Live broadcast when we're talking about seven hour DJ sets. So let me introduce John very quickly. John is one of the names in uh, the last two decades, in firstly in Britain and then nationwide, uh, and then, well I say nationwide, globally, as a um, underground trance DJ, I think that's probably fair. John, underground trance, comfortable yes, with that? Please. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, I'm happy with that because trance has changed its, uh, its meaning over the last decade. So, um, so you know, I've known John <laughs> since, I've, I've, I've known of John since we were both half our current age. You started DJing at 15, right, John? Yes. Uh, John's one of the saviors of the long DJ set. We wanted to talk long DJ sets here today because John's going to be doing Ministry of Sound in, in um, December, playing a seven-hour set. So he kindly agreed to come on here, not only to talk to, to us about playing a seven-hour DJ set, but actually to report back from the gig as well. So he's going to be answering questions with a film crew at the gig, hopefully, uh, and showing you kind of a bit of the behind-the-scenes stuff as well. So what you're watching now, taken alongside so, uh, what John gives us early in the new year after that gig, I think could be really valuable for people who want to play long DJ sets. So if that sounds cool to you, John, I think we should, uh, we should get stuck right in. What do you say? Yeah, and I'll, I will take a, a mental note and write down notes of the questions that come in throughout our, our, our little chat here. And I'll, I'll get the camera crew and for me to have moments of, if there's a specific question of something I'm doing within my set, I will make a point of getting those moments filmed and then answering what I did at those specific problematic or the, the, those moments that people are asking about. So I will point them out throughout the whole set. That's cool. That's really uh, generous of you, John. So I thought that for those of you who are watching this because you watched our live broadcast, we had a few glitches on and we said, OK, well, what we'll do is hit record and just finish it off there. Uh, for those of you who've come here from there, I thought there's a little bit of extra value, if this is all right with you, John. I've opened a little document and when we go through the four areas of playing a long DJ set, I'm just going to put John's tips in this document and maybe I can make it available after the broadcast to people to, to have a look at. How does that sound to you? Sounds good to me. All right, awesome. Right, so uh, right, so we, we 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 separated this into four things: preparation, how to get everything ready for your gig, uh, place, like the environment, uh, the DJ booth, how to get all the gear ready and stuff, because a seven-hour set is different to a half-hour set, right? You want to get that stuff right. Performance, yep. how to keep the dance floor happy for seven hours, um, and promotion, how to get these types of gigs. So let's start with preparation, John. Uh, and if you are booked as you are now for ministry in, in a month's time. How do you prepare? Give me a few of the steps you go through to prepare your music for a mammoth set like seven hours of ministry. I think you need to go through the various processes of um, what's going to happen within that evening. Um, you've got people, you've got people walking in the door. We've got an empty room. People are just walking in. So the what, what you don't need to be doing is thrashing out all of the, the top 10 hits at that moment. You want to you, you want to put yourself in the shoes of a club or walking into a room. What, what you want to experience as well, you just want to comfortably walk in there. If there's a ministry hasn't got a bar in that main, main room, but the, a lot of clubs do have a bar there. Is when you first come in, you want to go and get for, go for a drink. You want to meet your mates that you've organized together or you come in with friends. You want to kind of have your drink and be able to chat to them properly. So it's, it's kind of almost, it's like that background music, but enough to get their attention, uh, to get them wiggling. That's the whole point of this, this, this opening, um, of an opening set, a warm-up set. So it's, it's getting the tools to, to, to do that job. So it's, it's looking at those moments where you want to the, 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 get them in the groove moment. Then you've got you've to figure out how to get them for the, from the groove onto the dance floor. So then you're looking at another playlist of those tracks will take the energy up, level up a little bit. Might be some clever little bootlegs or some, an old track that they'll be familiar with. You know, oh, I haven't had this for a while, but in the same vein as off the back of the warm-up set, just something to, to prick their ears up and get their attention, to get that, 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 that wiggling to a dance. So then you're looking to get them to dance. Then you've got to get the rest of the crowd, because you will, you'll always get a bulk of people which will come to the dance floor. And then it's that next energy level to like, okay, let's get the rest of, let's get everyone else involved. Um, so you're looking at those specific energy levels. This is just within a warm-up set. And so the, so the whole process is you need the musical tools to get them in the door, to get them nice and groovy, to get the dance floor really dancing. Not rocking, we'll come to that later. You, you want the whole dance floor, you, you've got their interest. You've got their ears pricked fully up like, okay, I'm interested in what's going on now. So that's how I prepare just those zones into multiple subcategories. So that warm-up set, then we'll go 
when the party begins. And again, it, for me, when you're playing seven hours, a long set, the whole night, this could be, this, this could relate to a wedding DJ, to, to anyone that's doing the, a gig in the pub. You don't want to give away all your weapons straight away. It's, you know, just, just take it easy. That, you, you, you've got plenty of time to give, give them that. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's that skill of teasing them. It's like this, this constant tease going on. on Give them a little tease that it's it's like, oh, I really enjoyed that moment, but it's not the big killer, hands in the air, punch moment. It's enough to like, oh, this is getting really interesting now. I'm enjoying this. But there's also, it's like this cat and mouse game of not losing their interest. You want to kind of draw this out, this this teasing and this fun thing to keep them not, don't give away your, your full cards just yet, but you've, you've got to learn and understand when the moment is to do that because you don't want them walking away thinking, all right, this guy, he's just trickling along, it's not going anywhere. So again, for that next category, it's, it's having the, the preparation again is key, is making a note of those tracks that will really get the crowd's attention. So it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be an anthem that everybody knows. Of course, it's, it's every, every environment is different, and they're different that you're playing. If you're a wedding DJ, of course, you've got to play something that everybody knows. But in my world, the underground world, it's, I don't necessarily play like that. I'm working on energy moods and moments just to know when to go up to the next energy level when they're ready to get to that, that point where they're at now to go up again, to go up another gear. To like, oh, yeah, we're really going. This is rocking now. I'm enjoying this. So that's, so that's, cool. that's cool that you're, you know, you're thinking in these kind of big areas beforehand. It's, it's cool that you shared that. I love wiggling to dancing. Um, and uh, so um, we've talked about warming up. We've talked about uh, as, as it's filling up. Uh, and teasing but not giving up the goods too soon. When you've got your full dance floor, when it's peak time, you know, on a seven hour set maybe, you're into hour three or whatever, uh, or hour four, uh, and it's starting to really pump, and the people have settled in, and you know, they're, they've decided, right, I'm staying, this is me for the night. What, what, yeah. what are the tips, once you've hit that stage, what are the tips for keeping it interesting and, and, and not losing their interest at that kind of higher energy end of the, of the event? I think, for me, there's like what, what I put into my head, and there's, there's a whole cliche about this is comedians. And it's like, you, you know, it stems back from years ago, from before TV days, when a comedian gets on the stage, he's got to win the crowd over. And if he doesn't win them over, everyone's just sort of throw eggs and tomatoes at him. Get them off, get them off, get the next one on. That's kind of what you're doing with, with, with music. And if you... For that moment when you're getting the crowd rocking, yeah, you can put a track on that people know, or it's one that you really love. It's quite uplifting. It's got all the nice moments, and everyone's like, "Oh, this is brilliant." But like that comedian, if he he gets the people's interest with that knock knock joke, but if he carries on doing knock knock another one, knock 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 knock, people are gonna okay, I, I get it now. This is this is boring. If you're doing this for half an hour, and it's the same thing if you if you just unleash these weapons for the following half an hour to an hour. People become numb to it. It's, you you, you want to take them up there, but then you've got to learn, don't have that knock, knock, knock joke getting boring and you're going to have eggs and stars thrown at you. You've got to start going somewhere else. You've got to give them that so they know, oh, this, this DJ, actually, he's, he's going to throw some weapons at us, but then it kind of goes away again. So it's a tease. But you've got to know and you've got to learn to, to know and feel and read the dance floor where to go after that moment? Do you go up? Do you go hard? Do you go driving? Do you go back down again? Do you, it's, and it's, that's where your, your DJ instinct starts really coming into play here because you, 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 by looking at the crowd, is it a crowd that want hard music? Is it a crowd that are enjoying vocal music? Is it a crowd that are enjoying the melodic moments? So this is where you start pushing your boundaries and your, again, your preparation. You've just had an up moment, so it's got to go somewhere else. So you put a hard track on, right? Let's just pound them after this. So you put that hard track on, and if you're looking at the floor and you, you sense they're not they're not going for this, you can either try another hard one track, and then they really won't go for it. So then you've got to quickly adapt to get out of that sphere. Okay, they're not ready for this. They either don't like it. So again, your preparation. Let's put something melodic. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's slow things the, the energy level down again. So then you put one of those in. Suddenly you'll notice. The energy level lights up. There, you won them back. It's like, wow, okay, I'm starting to understand this crowd a bit. And you, you, 
you're only going to get a few strikes at this to get it wrong before you lose the trust of the dance floor. And that happens with every single set that I do. There is those strike moments where, okay, this didn't work, but you're learning the crowd. And they will, they will give you that space. What I've noticed with every crowd, they'll, they'll allow you to get something wrong. They're just, they're still with you, but they're like, okay, you can just tell they're not moving like they were. They're not willing. Yeah, they want. They're, they're willing to they're succeed. They're not dancing as much as they were. They're kind of willing you to succeed. Yeah, just they like, do, you know, and they just give you that. Yeah, so that's. I think that's if, a really. If you do good... it three. Carry on, carry on. Mate. Sorry, we've we got a delay. It, it... Yeah, yeah. If you do it three strikes in a row, of course they're good, you're going to lose their interest and their trust. But they will allow you. They, they will always allow you those moments to get it wrong. And what what I generally do when I get it wrong is get out of that track as soon as possible. And it's again, it's knowing your 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 tracks, knowing your equipment. And I might just stick a loop on there. You know, so the breakdown's happened. And it's like, there's another breakdown going to happen. And then there's like seven minutes to go. And that can see an, an, an age when you've got it wrong on the dance floor. So like, I'll just put it in a loop and quickly start mixing into something that, okay, let's go this other direction. And you're going to win them back. So get out of that moment as quick as you can. And that, that will help you win their trust a lot quicker. I love it. I love it. So they're seeing that you're you know, you're not, you're not, you're not uh, being obstinate. You're just getting on with it. You know, we all make mistakes. Things go wrong. Let's just move on and and uh, like stop digging, stop digging a hole. It's what, probably what a comedian would say. You know, stop digging that hole. Yeah, uh, that's awesome, and, John. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for that. Can I just cover another point where at this moment, Phil? Sorry again, because I think the most important moment when you've got it wrong, like a comedian, don't show you've got it wrong. If you suddenly drop your face, if you suddenly look unhappy, if you suddenly look stressed. They're going to feed back. They feed back. They're feeding back physically on what you're doing as well by the look. So just keep happy, keep smiling, keep dancing yourself, or whatever you do. Don't make it look like you've done something wrong. Otherwise, they will, they will completely reflect what is going on in the DJ booth. They'll see panic. They'll see stress. Then they'll feel that as well. Think, oh god, this guy's getting it wrong. Oh, I feel sorry for him now. So just. Keep, keep up the appearance. Just keep winging it, and then you'll win him back. I love it. I love it. Solid, solid, <laughs> solid advice here. Keep winging it, and you'll win them back. Um, I always used to say, I always used to say, if you do something technically wrong, do it four times, and everyone will think you meant to do it, and then do something else. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, John, let's move on to number two, uh, which is place, which is about the environment. So this is within an interesting thought that we developed because if you have been booked to play for half an hour or an hour. You're going to turn up, do your hour and get out, aren't you? But in fact, you're probably not yeah. even going to notice half of what's around you. But if you're booked to play seven hours, some things come into play which could have a real bearing on your set, on how well you do, how badly you do, you know, how, how comfortable you are. Uh, and a lot of that is due to the actual environment, what's around you, who's around you, how things are set up. What tips would you give DJs who know they're going to be in a DJ booth for, let's face it, a working day? Um, before they've even played a tune, before they've put their first record on, about getting the environment right, getting the DJ booth right, getting the gear right. What have you learned over the years about that? And what mistakes have you made that you've, you know, halfway through the set, you've thought, I wish I'd just done that when I could? <laughs> I think the, um, the, 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 yes, that has happened. And that, it, it happens once and you don't do it again. You've got to go for those moments of like, it goes. It stems back to vinyl. You know, you're not concentrating properly. Someone, someone talks to you when you just finished the mix. Then you go back to the booth. You suddenly lost your concentration. You pull the needle up off the wrong record. We've all done that. We've all pressed pause on the wrong CD player. We've all pressed pause on our laptops. And you do it once. You won't, you won't do that again. <laughs> but when it's like when when we just cover that technical, small technical aspect. Well. When I've gone to an energy mode, it's wrong. I quickly use the tools, the loops, etc., to get me out of that. And first thing I do when I get to um, uh, the, the DJ booth is make sure all the firmware is updated on on every device that you're playing. It. This this can be your your laptop or, or anything, but I play on CDJs. Make sure one that my software. I use Recordbox. The first thing that I do before any update of Recordbox. Let's go on forums and look at everyone's bug reports. Make sure that it's safe to do that. When I'm comfortable, it's safe to do that. I will update that. But then the firmware and software will run in sync together. So if you've, if you've got four CDJs, one of them has never been updated in its life. It's just come out of the box or it hasn't been updated for ages. If you go to do some of those moves and those um, lovely tricks that they add in the updates, I think you will either go an emergency loop, it'll crash, something will go wrong. And I've learned that, and I've actually learned it the hard way. All four CDJs 
were, were, were completely out of date and I had to stop everything. I had no choices. Digital burp went across the whole lot. Everything went in an emergency loop. Even the uh, the router uh, crashed as well. Where this this digital thing, I had to turn everything off, turn it back on, and that five minutes of messing around was awful. The whole crowd standing in front of me, looking at me stressed. I could not smile and get out of that one, not with any music <laughs> playing. So that, that's the first thing. Make sure that your your equipment is is up to date. This is the reason why they do the software and the firmware dates in parallel with each other. So they communicate, and everything should work flawlessly. That's really and interesting. The same that's with, really um, interesting. So often you turn up at a DJ booth. That's not going to be the case, right? The CDJs might be way out of date. So, I mean, if you're playing all night, I oh, guess yeah. you, you get the advantage then of being able to do that before anyone's arrived at the venue, right? You don't get that advantage when you're yeah. just one DJ on the bill. You've got to remember there's different scenarios you're presented with. You, you just presume, or that the sound engineer might have done that the, the previous night. But on the previous night that he's completely unaware of, in room two, the DJ had a nightmare. The DJ in the main room was using a laptop. He didn't need a CDJ, so they swapped him over between the rooms. Sound engineer has no idea what any of this lot has gone on because he's gone home. So that equipment up there hasn't been updated. Things happen. People... People mess around with things, or at the end of the set, they swap things around, thinking, oh, that CJ, some, some crafty resident had problems on the CDJ, so he swaps it over at the end of the night without telling anyone. So then the problems just move down to the other room. So that these things happen all the time. So I check the LAN cables. The LAN cables is important because you get some cheap, nasty ones. I carry my own if I don't look, like the look of them. Check the LAN cables. Check the firmware check the cabling, go through a little sound check, make sure there's nothing crackly. I check the monitors, the amount of time, again, monitors might have been swapped, and the DJ playing the night before, played it too loud, and you bust one of the monitors, and you've got farting and crackling in one side, and then you've got to pop up with that for seven hours. It would drive me nuts. So I just, I just go through this process of checking everything, making sure it's all sounding nice. I actually run on the dance floor as well. This is only because I've, I've, I've got the... Um, the, 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 I've got the, the, the painful that I'm there early and I, I can get there and do a sound check, make sure all the sound system's working as, as it should. And uh, yeah, I just run through that whole process. So going onto the dance floor I think is awesome. I think it's such a good thing to do. I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, both before and actually, if you can, while you're warming up and stuff, right? So you can just see how it's sounding out there for people. Um, yeah, and if, if you're not familiar with the room, just covering this, um, if it's the first time I've done an open to close, you, you've got to learn the, the, the sound of, of the room. Every room is completely different. You know, every, 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 every sound system will have a sweet spot in a certain frequency. It's just the shape of the room, the dynamics of where the, the, the sound of the speakers are positioned, what sound system they're using. So that will affect the sound of your tracks. Like previous week, I might have been playing some stuff and it sounded really deep. The low end was really punching, but on this specific sound system, where the sweet spot was on that one, it doesn't sound so good on this one. So when you wanted to go into a deep pounding mode, when the whole room shaker was just that beat, you play it on this sound system. It's like, oh my God, it's, it's, it just sounds empty and it doesn't work so well. So again, preparation, it's difficult to make notes on things like this, but this is where it goes into learning your music. This is a memory game of learning those specific tracks. They have certain kind of, I can identify a 909 sounding kick or an 808 sounding kick or a certain kind of um, bass. It's just looking at that track and thinking, I know it kind of got this techie 909 feel. It's not going to sound good on on this specific sound system this week. And what, I, what I'm trying to do with the vibe and changing the, the musical gear, it's not going to happen this, this week round, not on this specific sound system. But the mid-range sounds, they sound amazing. They're really powerful. So then you're actually changing the, 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 the tracks that you're playing due to how the, the sound of the room is, how the, the sound system's performing. That's, and that an, does that, make that's it awesome. Different for me. It's awesome that you're sharing that. It's just encouraging people to actually listen to their tracks with a view to how they might sound on different systems they're used to playing on. Just think, just, just thinking about that yeah. is likely to improve your DJ, right? Um, Completely. And for the next generation, the, the, the ones that, they'll probably, their first gigs in the real world will be in a pub somewhere, which is how I started. It's how Carl Cox started, many of us. What sounds good at home with your lovely monitors, you've got a sub bass and everything, it sounds really good at home. When you suddenly go into that new environment with that pub, you realise there's no low ends. 
there's no low end in that pub and all those deep tracks that sound fantastic to build a groove in that pub they will not work in that pub you yeah. need to quickly adjust and start playing some other stuff and that's where you get to know the dynamics of your tracks to know where to reach for those tracks think okay it's going wrong in this little pub sound system okay let's do these ones I think some so of our a, audience who are used to live streaming or, or recording their DJ mixes and up, uploading them to YouTube and stuff and then watching their own mixes back on a phone will actually be nodding away saying, I know what you mean here, John, because <laughs> if you've mixed with a filter and you've put some really filtered bass and that is, that is your mix, right? You just yeah. don't hear it. So you realise that it's just the same thing on a bigger scale, right? You're just hearing the tap. The yeah, yeah, it's like you're not mixing at all, right? John, I want yeah, to... Yeah, there's no, nothing there underneath. I wanted to move on to um, another thing about place, which is people. So we've talked about tech, we've talked about gear, we've talked about getting the sound right. What about the, the, the people who are likely to be in your face, uh, making your life great, making your life hell? What about control over who's around you when you're DJing? What do you try and achieve when you know you're going to be playing for a long time? Do you have a mate by the door stopping people coming in? Do you, how do you play it? Are you... You're talking place as in the DJ booth and Yeah, you're in the booth. The, you're, this the is your place, right? Me. This is your workplace. Uh, and sometimes it can be lovely. Sometimes the door team are on top of it. Sometimes, you know, you've got your best friend with you. You've got some, a camera crew. You've got, you know, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever. But sometimes it can just get chaos, right? And that doesn't really matter when you're playing for an hour, but when you're playing all night. So what tactics do you use to control <laughs> your environment and make sure that only the right people are around you? Or do you have to get used to the fact that sometimes you just can't do that? For me, me personally, everybody's different, but for me personally, I do not want anybody in the DJ booth with me. It's, it's a big no-no. The, the clubs, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate because it's on my rider and I can get away with this, but the clubs know it's a no-no. No one comes in the DJ booth. And the only, the only reason is when I'm, when I'm really in my zone of that set and I'm, 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 I'm in a certain vibe and I'm, my mind is thinking three, four tracks ahead of where I want to be. And I'm, I'm figuring out in my head how I'm going to get from this sonic moment where I am musically to this other moment, wherever it's deep. I was, we, we've touched, touched on this before. How I'm going to get from this vibe to that vibe. And quite often you can't do it just within one track. So it might take me three tracks. I know I want to get to this point and I'm going to work hard and I'm working hard in my mind what tracks and where to wait for. All these things we just spoke about, how to get from point A to point B. If somebody's in the DJ booth and they go, hey, mate, how's it going? And they, it could be an old friend and they want to catch up. They're just telling him about a new car that he's bought and how his dog's <laughs> e eating his shoes. It's like I have just completely lost where that, 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 that map, that road map, how I was going to get to that zone. And I'm suddenly I'm presented with the track that's playing has now only got a minute and a half to go. And I, I, you're going panic, you just completely lose your, your train of thought, where the energy is in the room. For me, it's a big no-no, I can't do that. But when I look at others, I don't know, I guess the boiler room sessions are a prime example of that. A lot of techno DJs, they like a massive big, killer party in the DJ booth with thousands of people in there but for me I don't like that that so many things can go wrong drink spilt in the DJ booth people they don't understand our, our, our working environment and they're, they're blocking the monitors so you can't hear they're putting drinks down everywhere they spill drinks there's, there's a quite a few famous um boiler room sessions where drinks have gone all the equipment and it's all gone horribly wrong it's it's a big no-no for me so, so for really a, extended set no I've written down, try and ensure that if you want to be alone or if you just want certain people with you, uh, that the venue can organise this for you. Um, cool. Um, yeah, and I, and I think every, the, the reason that, that that will be different for everyone because I'm, I'm really fortunate, I'm very confident in the DJ booth. Not, not, one, not one DJ set do I get worried or nervous. I, I actually have the opposite. I'm just an excited kid. I want to push the person off before me or can't wait to start the night. But other people are nervous. So they have the comfort of having... I suppose it's like anything. If you're going to go to the dentist or something, you've got the comfort of friends and familiar people around you. You've got that comfort, which will help you perform. So, again, everybody is going to be different. But if you have that comfort and you like that comfort feeling, before the gig, set the rules with them. Just say, look, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't stand in the way. Because they don't know that work environment. And I guess we've been guilty when we go into their work. If they own a, a, a car workshop, first thing you go and you start messing around, touching stuff, and you could be under the ramp or, of a car. It'll say no, no. This, this is, this is. You, you can't go here. You can't stand there. Don't touch this. It's no different. 
No, it's not. And people don't, people just, don't just understand it. I mean, as a, as a DJ, you know, as well, I, I totally get what you're saying. People don't understand that, you know, <laughs> part of the job is to fake it. Is, as you said, part of the job is to fake it. If things aren't going well, to smile, to look confident. But um, people misread that as being, hey, that's easy. I'm just going to go in there and dick around while they're <laughs> playing. Yeah. John, you, well, let's move on because we've got another two to get to. And, um, yeah. and uh, there's so much good stuff here, you know. Um, I don't want to miss any out. So the next big, big thing, we've covered preparation, getting your gear ready, uh, your music ready. We've covered place, getting the gear ready, getting your environment sorted out and so on. Yeah, with some great tips there. Uh, performance. So we've actually done a bit of this already in preparation. But performance, how to keep yeah. the dance floor happy for seven hours. So I think when, let, let's separate this kind of category from preparation by talking about the way you conduct yourself, if you like, you know, you are, yeah. it's not just the music, it's also people, it's energy, it's you as a human being and these other human beings. So talk to me about the personal way of, of, of performing. Talk to me about, forget the music, let's not talk music here, let's talk about body language and let's talk about contact with other people and let's talk about all that stuff. And that this, this is, this is the, the most hardest part of of DJing is reading people. You've just said the, 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 the key word there, body language. Because we are human beings at the end of the day. We we might have had a bad week, something might have happened bad in, in, in the news recently, then um you, you've you've got to kind of read you've got to read all these key signals. You become you become I don't think I can't think of the right word, like a doctor or something. You start reading signs of of human beings and but as you're performing and playing certain styles of music, you're 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 picking up those 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 signs from from those human beings. I'm going to call them human beings at the moment because that's how you have to look at them. Yes, they're dancing, but you're picking up these trigger signals of of what mood they're in, and you don't know what mood they're in. And, and sometimes they're happy, and I just just want to be happy stuff. Or sometimes I just want to get their heads down. And it's 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 reading those signs of. Again, if you've got a thousand people in front of you, it's like everyone's going to be in a different mood. But you've got to try and bring them in synergy together, and bring them a little bit of every emotion, so you're keeping everybody happy. But if, for example, those those trigger signs, the vocal stuff, you just see that they're just not into this. They're just I don't play vocals myself, but I'm, I'm trying to speak out for every kind of DJ. You know, they're like they're not having this. They don't want to sing along today. They're just not up for it. Then you you can quickly eliminate that from. From your your set again, it's it's the preparation. You know, okay, let's calm down with the vocal stuff. Just one every two hours or so. That that's enough. And if you again, you're going too hard. That that they, they might not be in an aggressive mood. And like I'd, you can just tell that, especially the, there is a gender thing. It's it's a, I shouldn't say this in this day and age, but generally the, the say now some of the girls like really, really banging hard the music. But generally, if you're if you're I'm going to put this into a gender thing. If if you're playing kind of dark and aggressive, and the guys are enjoying it, but the the girls are not enjoying it, which it, unfortunately is the way. I know there's this equality thing that you have to talk about these days, but it could be the opposite way around. The girls are enjoying the hard stuff, and the guys are not. But whichever way around it is, you've got to adapt to think. Okay, I'm losing one sphere of audience here, and. I, I, I've got to balance this. I don't want to be left with all the girls have gone home, all the guys have gone home. You've got to have this balance. And it's reading those key sig these key signals. It's so hard. You do become a little bit of a human specialist. That, and, and, or it could be that if you talk it generally, if you're playing hard and you notice know, the crowd's spinning it, you're getting it wrong. Pull them back. You've got to win them over. So, what mood are they in this week? What what? So it's like a teacher, really. A teacher has to take the, take their class. It's like a teacher who doesn't know their class. <laughs> you know, your classes come in on a Monday morning and anything could have happened at the weekend, the weather, the, you know, the, the football, the news, whatever, and, and, and the class are going to be in a different mood. But your job as a teacher is to kind of get everyone on the same page so that they can get something from the lesson. And I guess as a DJ, we're talking the same thing. You don't know what's happened outside of that dance floor, but your job is to try and no. get everyone on the same page. Um, yeah, by you've the way, got to get them in synergy. That once once they're in synergy, everybody's smiling. Everybody starts getting in the same the same mood, and they feed off each other when they're in the same mood. But if you've got some one group of people that are just going for it aggressively, and the other people are not, there's an imbalance. And yes, it's okay to do that for a while. Everyone likes to kind of really go for it. But if 
they might want to do that all night. But if you really sense, okay, there's a, there's a group here, there's a group there, there's a group there, you've got to start bring, winning them over. Just knowing, knowing, okay, they've had that little aggressive moment. It's going to come back again, but it's, it's how you tease it and bring them back into the conversation, the musical conversation. But it, it's really unpredictable. Every night is unpredictable. Are, are, they, are they going to be open for a, a variety of all sorts? Do they just want to be this melodic moment? Do they just want to be this happy moment? Do they, they, they will just want to get their heads down? But the, the, biggest, the, the biggest conversation that I have with all my colleagues, it's the, it's the gender thing it, that comes up. It's the biggest conversation all the time. Everybody says, for some reason, you either win one group over or the other group. It's, it's, a, it's a bizarre thing. Well, you know, um, I, I, we, we, we talk about this a lot. And we, I'm quite happy to talk about this because it would be um, a disservice to DJ not to talk about how men and women are different yeah. on the dance floor. And, of course, you have to generalise. You can't generalise more than men, women, right? And we all know there's a no. major, major, every kind of group possible under that, every spectrum possible. But yeah, you yeah. rarely see men encouraging each other to dance, right? But girls do. And that is just one of many, many things that we could say that people will nod along and say, yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. is often the case. And I think just, you know, um, taking it into account rather than being, you know, I will I, now I will play big vocal tunes for the girls to get them dancing. Now I will play some hard tunes for the boys to get their heads down. No, that, that is pretty cheesy, right? But take, I think no. what you're saying is take it into account. And, and 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 if you are only appealing to literally fifty percent of the room because the other the other the other sex is not interested, explore it. Work out why. You know. Um, yeah, and it's not the stereotypical. That's that's what people say or that come, comes up. Oh, the girls like the vocally stuff. It no, it could be the opposite way. It could be like really aggressive, dirty, driving bass lines. The girls are really wiggling and dancing. They're like they're lapping it up. And then you can okay, there's other group. They're, they're not so much going for it. So it's, it, one, it, 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 it's one of the things to bear in mind, you know, don't, 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 don't pretend you've got everyone, there, there, there are two sexes on your dance floor. And that's obviously important because as you say, it's quite something that you, that you pro DJs talk about all the time to each other. So um, Yeah, and it's not, it's not that I'm looking at this, I never do, it's just some situations you notice, it's suddenly you become aware of it, think, hang on, there's, there's, there's an imbalance and what, what's going wrong on, on here? But it's not, I'm not saying this is, this is week, week to week, it's just... I don't know if females are more comfortable. They, like you said, they encourage each other to dance, where the guys are a little bit more shy. They're, they, 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 I remember when I was going out clubbing. I don't go with my, my mates. Go, yeah, let, let's let, let's go for a real wiggle and a, a groove. I just tend to notice. <laughs> great moves, great to, moves, there, fella. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah exactly. We don't do that. But the, <laughs> I think when when the girls are going, it, it encourages the guys because they see they, they give off a, the most amazing energy once you win. The females over there, it get, it get, it's the guys moving. So I think that helps. You you get them going. The, the guys really join in. They feed off that. So, we've so talked it's important about, not to lose that, that. We've talked about that. Groups, sex groups yep. of different sexes, groups of different people into different stuff, trying to keep everyone happy. We've talked about um, uh, kind of not showing if things are going wrong to keep the vibe nice in the room and just dealing with it. Yep. We've talked about um, how every room is different. Talk a little bit about... You know, the DJs used to be, as Paul Van Dyke said once, the, the geeky guy in the corner with all the records. No one even looked at them. No one even really knew they were there unless they happened to be stood in that part of the room. Obviously, there's been a big change. And even in the even in the Ministry of Sound, um, where you're going to be playing, you know, it's obvious where the DJ is. The DJ's raised up and so on. Talk to me a little bit about what you do with your eye contact, your arms, your body, your how you convey yourself um, to your audience as a DJ. And obviously every DJ is different, but I'm interested in how you do it. Are you kind of like head down, never looking up, uh, just kind of looking through the corner of your eyes? Are you someone who likes to just Jesus pose all the way through your set? Or, you know, tell me how you handle yourself uh, and give advice to people who, a lot of DJs are introverts, right? A lot of DJs don't particularly want to be up there. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so tell me, talk to me about it. I, I, I think the important thing is just, you've got to be yourself and become become your own character. Every, every DJ has got characteristics that you, I don't know if you look at one extreme like Steve Aoki, who, who is the, the entertainer DJ, he's doing all the antics for his hour set, he's running around doing cakes and all that kind of stuff. But then you'll get John Digweed, for example, he'll just have his head down. But that becomes part of your characteristics. That's instantly, that's why we, I've mentioned Steve's name and then John's name, because that's part of their characters. 
feel comfortable within your character. Don't start jumping around doing stuff just because you see guys doing it on YouTube. Think, oh, that's what I need to do. Feel comfortable with what you're doing, and people they'll get to learn you over time. The more you play, they'll just get to know of who you are and why you do it. When John looks, John Digweed looks at the crowd, and he's made eye contact, that will pick the crowd up because it's like, oh, he does. He really does that. There he is. That that's his magic. That that's his hands in the air moment to to his audience. So just just feel comfortable. Don't start doing stuff just because you think it's right, just because you think it's going to get you another booking, just because you think A-list Mr. Celebrity DJ has been doing it for a long time. Just do what you feel right. That's really nice, really nice advice. You, you will. It's really nice I mean, advice. That's, a, that, because, that's the best way. Because, you know, you go and see bands and some bands are very chatty between songs and they change their songs up and they kind of like, it's almost like a DJ set. And other bands, yeah. heads down, they, they play the songs in the same order. And, you know, and like you say, people get known for stuff. So personally, I don't, I, I don't like it when, when some band divides the crowd down the middle and says, now you, now you. And they don't sing their own choruses. But other people love that stuff. No, I prefer yeah, to, yeah. You know, so you're quite, I, I love yeah, that. Yeah. But, you know, be your, become your own character and be comfortable with who you are up there give it time i guess to develop as well especially if you're a new dj new to playing these long sets the good thing about long sets is people get a chance to get to know you right they get a chance to see you at the beginning in the middle and the end and all right john let's move on to promotion which is the final thing you know we've talked a lot about playing a long dj set uh, yeah. and we've talked about how um djs get to flex their muscles here and also we talked before we hit record about how that it looks like djing swing you back in that direction which is really cool yeah but if you have been watching this this far and you think I really, really want, and I guess you probably are really interested if you've been watching this far because we've gone to a lot of depth here, I really want to play this kind of set. Um, how do people get these kind of gigs? Seven hour gigs, long gigs, playing all night, playing a residency, getting a chance to not be in an environment where maybe there are guest DJs as well. It's very different to bagging yourself 45 minutes somewhere. How do people, how should people go about it? What tips would you have for people who are thinking, I want to do this? I think the, the, be the best way that I personally learn, and I can speak on behalf of the Carl Coxes, the, the, the John Digweeds, uh, all, all of these guys that have been around for a long time, we all started our careers the same way. We, we, started, we started putting our own gigs on. And I think mean, in, in the very, very beginning, you're going to make a whole load of mistakes. We covered this in earlier on this, this conversation. This is where you make mistakes. So just make them at your own gigs. Make them at these. You care about them. I was going to say that you don't care about them, but you don't care about them so much. This is, this is where you're going to make your puppy steps. This is where you, you, you're going to be in a pub. Realistically, you're going to have 20 people in front of you, and it makes no odds if they come and go because there's always traffic coming in and out of a pub. It's not like a club where you've got 1,000 people you're going to lose more, and they're not, they're not going to, you're not going to get 1,000 footfall back in again. Um, but you will learn everything about how to unfold a set preparation. Everything we spoke about, you will learn in that pub of looking at the, the, the good, great thing with, with, um, with pubs is there's always a, a, a large amount of footfall. So you've lost five people, <laughs> which were a, a core of your audience. You're like, okay, what I was playing didn't obviously win a moment, but then another five come in, right, okay. I'm going to win these over. So you really work hard. Those five people, they got a drink. You know you've got them there for 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to work my ass off to make them drink and stay longer. And then the next people come in and they say, so it's this constant game in your head of winning people over. But this is where you will learn your gut, your gut instinct, how to read the body language, everything we, we've spoke about. So I can't emphasize enough. Start your own gigs. Everyone's doing the same mistake these days because they're, they're making a few tracks. They're getting them signed to a, a label. They just think they're going to go off and tour and they're going to get signed up by a management and, a, and a, an agency. Oh, this is it. I, my, my track went to number five in Beatport. This is, this is it. My journey begins. It doesn't. You've got to put on your own nights and borrow, borrow, beg, steal all your mates to go to that pub that you, you're, you're playing at. For the first few weeks, just get them all in there. Get that, get that night busy. Get it rocking. And then before you know it, you, the, the pub will say, okay, you might have got the Monday, which I'm, that's, that, this is my journey. I've got the worst day ever, a Monday. It was awful. And then it, I, I got it going so well because I begged my mates to come in every week that they, they eventually, oh, we'll give you the Thursday night. That's become available now because that band was rubbish that used to come in. So then you, you get a little bit more of a prime time slot. 
Thursday's a lot easier. And then I'm, you get that Thursday night rocking. And then the, 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 the pub down the road is like, John, you're nailing it on that Thursday night. We've just lost our Saturday DJ. Then you, you've got a 200 capacity pub or something, something bigger. So then you're growing and growing. And then your, your value becomes more locally. And then it can expand to, to, to bigger cities uh, as you grow. So promoting those nights, promoting your own night, learn the mistakes at the very beginning with those 20 people. And as it grows and grows, your skills will get better and better and better. And uh, you'll learn not to, lo to lose those people. I love that. I love that idea that it's like lives in a video game. People come and go in, in a different way to the, the way they would in a club. And, uh, and so you just get a new life after half an hour. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Um, <laughs> it's true you want to win them over, but you don't, you don't know anything about them. They haven't specifically come for the music or, that or the, whatever the flyer is. They probably haven't seen it, to be honest. They've walked past the pub. They've walked in there. You know nothing about these people. Like, all right, I'm going to win them over. This is it. You're, you're going to be my friend at the end of this. At the end of your drink, you're going to get another, and you're going to be my friend. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so you know you're learning your skills. You're doing it right. You're getting residences, uh, even if it's only in pubs, and you know. But you're working your way up. The good thing about yeah. these gigs is they're naturally long because there's there's no fly with yeah. five DJs on. You're playing from eight till two, uh, and um, and you are now at a point where you're relatively successful. And well, by relatively, I mean you know you can you can get your Friday and Saturday gigs somewhere. So you are you you're a working DJ. Most people don't get that far, of course. And now yeah. you want to get known for playing long sets. You want to get booked um, to play long sets. Any tips on on that, on the long set bit? On uh, find, Is it residency swaps? Is it um, talk, getting to know promoters who you know are into this kind of thing? I mean, what tips could you offer people who think, how can I persuade someone to give me the whole night? I think the key for me, how, my, how I made... I, I'm, I'm born and bred in a sleepy little seaside town in the... It's, it's Worthing in, in Sussex, and it's, there, there is no electronic scene even today. So my, my career started in this sleepy seaside town. On paper, it should not, not happen, because everyone thinks, oh, you need to be in London, you need to be in Manchester. John Digweed was brought up in Hastings. When you look at the, look at the journey of all of the, the, the DJs that, the, that you know, the A-list DJs, we all came from sleepy little towns. So I made the step from going to this sleepy seaside town to my next big, biggest city, which is Brighton. And then I went up to London and started spreading around the, the biggest cities across the, the country. The, the respectful thing to do, everyone, everyone sees these names like Ministry of Sound, all these successful nights, and they're, they're badgering the promoter. Like, I want to play for you, I want to play for you. You've got to remember that promoter, what you feel about DJing is your baby, it's your hobby, you absolutely adore it. They absolutely love and adore their promotion, their, their night, the one that they've been working tirelessly on for, for many, many years. So somebody called call, 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 and saying, yeah, I want to play your club. Okay, yeah, yeah. have you been there? Did you enjoy it? Oh, no, I haven't been there. Why is he going to trust you? You've never been there. You're asking to play a set at his, his night when you've never been there. So how do you know you're going to fit? The, the, the respectful thing to do is invest in getting your hotel. If you're going to stay overnight, go up to their club. Go and listen to it. Make sure that you will fit in this. Go from right from the very beginning doors open and try and stay if you can stay all night listen to the whole musical progress one understand that you will fit in that that club musically maybe not the first visit the second visit if you've communicated with the promoter next time go and find him go and meet him do do a, do a face-to-face -face contact and say hey my name is john i've been contacting him an email just to let you know i'm here let him know just show that you've been there that that five minute conversation even if he's busy Next time you go in there and speak to him, you can say, oh, listen, that club, that, that, that event was amazing. I really enjoyed myself. I know that I could do a, a, a really amazing warm-up set for you. Then he's, he remembers that he's seen you there. So then the conversation gets a little bit more relaxed. He'll probably come back and he or she will say, oh, great, yeah, it was good to see you there. Oh, yeah, I'm glad he had a wonderful time. You, you want that warm-up set. Get the trust. Get in the door. Do the warm-up set. Start performing amazing warm-up sets for that promoter. Then the trust will be gained again. Then ask, once you've got the relationship with the promoter, say, look, do you mind if I can play like a later set? Can I play, can I close the night? Can I play another part within the night? Once the trust is there, they will give you that slot. And then you get these magic moments where, like I, I had one where I was doing this warm-up set. It was at the, the Zap in Brighton in those days in the, in the 90s when the headliner didn't turn up. And I was playing in the back room. 
and, and I, I used to do warm up set and end set in that room, and they said, "Oh, um, the, the, the headliner's messed up." I suddenly got a main headliner slot because they trusted me. Said they, my name was the go-to. Said John opens the room, closes the room. Absolutely amazing. The people seem to love him doing this. They bung, they put me in the middle. Bang! I did that set. The crowd went absolutely mental. From then onwards, I got the trust to play any position within that club. They moved me to the main room. They they kept moving my set around. It's 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 building the trust, building that you will. What we said right at the very beginning, you're not going to empty the club out. That that promoter, that club can trust you. Suddenly realizes, okay, I can put him on the beginning. I can put him on at the end. I can put him on the middle. He, he can really work the crowd at any point. That. That's at the point when exactly what I did with the zap said, do you mind if I play all night? You know, who have we got coming up? Can I, can I do the whole night? And I, because of the trust, I did it. And it really worked. And from then onwards, I started doing a weekly all night at that club. So it's, it's just such, such good advice. And I think the thing I, that I've picked up most from that is promoters love their nights just like you love your music. And I think people forget yeah. that. They think, I've done a great mixtape. I deserve a slot. And they get quite angry if they don't get the slot. They're like, well, what's wrong? You know, what's wrong with this person for not giving me the gig? And as you say, it's a lack yeah, of respect. Yeah. It's a lack of respect for um, what goes on outside the DJ booth and what goes on away from the music and, and, and uh, what other people want. Uh, because as you say, you you know what you want. You want the gig, but the promoter wants something different. So get in their shoes before you expect them to give anything back to you. It's wonderful advice. Completely. And you... You've just nailed that word there. They think they deserve it. And a lot a lot do that. If, if they've had a track out, they haven't played anywhere, and they've had a track, it's, it's reached number five in Beatport. Because number five is all every single week in Beatport, but that one person can get a little bit cocky, and he thinks he deserves a slot at that club. It's like the promoters, why? Why do you deserve a slot? And it's when they get to have that, that cocky attitude or pres presumption, that's when things go wrong for you. It's that respect. You need to respect that, that, that promoter, that club. You need to respect. And... Again, gaining that trust and respect, that's what's going to open the door to you playing extended sets, longer sets, we're all playing all night. That, that, that's when the magic will happen. I love it. There's just so, so much really rock solid advice here. And remember, people, we're talking to someone here who's still, after, what, 20 years in the game, John still does this longer than that, I'm going to guess respectfully. So still does now. this every weekend. <laughs> still tours the world. Never mind his country. Still tours the world. So this is coming from someone who is talking truth. This isn't flavour of the month right now. This is truth. Um, John, I just want to thank you for spending that amazing amount of time there, sharing so much and so generously with us and our audience. Uh, we did this in, 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 in as a Facebook Live and a YouTube Live. It kind of went wrong, but you know what? I'm glad it went wrong because we've gone into so much depth here that we probably wouldn't yeah, have done. Yeah, we did. Um, which is awesome. I've done, as the, I haven't been, um, you know, answering my emails or on Facebook while we've been chatting. I have been typing up um, what you've been saying and I've put it into a nice little uh, chart which we will just give a little link to underneath this video for people who are interested in printing something out to remind them of this. Um, any Anything you want to add just before we, we finish off here? John, do you want to talk about the gig at Ministry for a little while that you're going to be filming uh, and, and coming back to us with? Do you want to give a shout out to um, to your you know your channel and your page? Anything you want to, you want to share um at the end, having given so much to us, what can we give you back? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you're if you're local and you're in the area, if you're, it's it's not just for a night out, but you can experience what what I've just spoke about. If you're around on the 28th of December, and this is not just to plug a gig because I do gigs every single week. But if you even if you stand at the back of the room, like what I used to do in my early days, come up and and experience a full open to close out. Come from the very beginning and try and stay all night. Watch what I'm doing. What look at. The things that we just spoke about. Watch me, uh, how I'm, uh, how I'm handling myself, how I'm handling the mistakes, and how I'm handling the room. Just watch, just watch everything. What's going wrong for, for that set? You'll you'll learn a hell of a lot by just by watching someone else perform those sets. And that that's what people don't tend to do. They like, I just want to do it because it's a thing. But you, you you to experience it in live in real in real person, you'll get so much from that. So that's so Friday, the 20, Friday the 28th of December 2018 at Ministry of Sound in uh, Elephant and Castle in London. So there you go. In no excuse. London. People. No excuse at all, people. You know and exactly. don't forget to make those, uh, those, those questions and those, those if, if we've missed anything, you want questions answered, send them to Phil there and then uh, I'll make a note, a mental note as I'm playing to try and get those answered for you and we'll, I'll talk about it afterwards 
and on there, the, the digital D-Day tips at Facebook site. So, You'll yeah, so top, on there. pop them underneath here in the comments and uh, we will collate those questions, get them to John. John's planning, if, if everything goes well, of actually answering some of your questions from the DJ booth, which would be awesome. Uh, and uh, and then we'll get you a bit of footage of the night as well, hopefully, if it all goes well. So yeah. the, in the follow-up article, your questions may be featured. And who knows, if you go, you may be featured. So uh, get yourself exactly. down there. Um, John, once more, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, we will chat again in uh, four or five weeks after the gig. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cheers, we'll man. Bye. Everything again.